based on the scriptures that we'll talk, touch a little on the scriptures then I'll just allow I'm just going to allow the Holy Spirit to just guide us and lead us into what he has in store for his people. Amen. Alright. So so we're talking about anointed for for this season. So what is this season? What season exactly are we talking about? Let's start from there. Because if we do not understand the season, then we will not know what we are anointed for. So is it are we anointed for the season of celebrating Christmas, New Year, and all of that? The answer is absolutely no. For there is a season that is coming upon that is dawning upon the face of the earth at, the, in the, at this time that we need to understand, that we need to come into a full awareness of. There has to be a divine awakening of what the Lord is doing in this present time and season. And I can assure you that it is not just about the celebration of Christmas or the New Year. It goes be way, way, way beyond that. It is not even about all of the things that are happening around, you know, in the world around us. It goes way beyond that. It is actually us coming into a clear understanding of what the Lord is activating and what He's releasing in the earth realm in this time and season. And when I say earth realm, I'm talking. I think I'll use the word the cosmic realms. Now, the cosmic realms means that it goes beyond the earth realm because one of the things that have limited us is that we have operated within the earthly systems. So the earthly systems have actually turned us and um, boxed us in. So we are not able to express ourselves beyond what this system that is so boxed in. We have not been able to express ourselves beyond it. But I'm hoping, I'm trusting that when we finish, by the time we finish by tomorrow, we will have a clear understanding of the spheres that we are supposed to be operating in that is far beyond, way, way, way beyond the spheres of this earth realm. Because if we limit our timings, if we limit our operations within the earth realm, then you, you will need to ask yourself the question, what happens to all the other galaxies? What happens to Pluto? What happens to Venus? What happens to Mars? What happens to, you know, um, all of the other Andromeda? What happens to all of those galaxies? What happens to the stars? What happens to the sun? What happens to the moon? How do we bring them into alignment if we are operating within and under them? So you begin to see that when you talk about times and seasons, it is not by any means to limit you. It is not by any design. It is not designed to box you into the operations of the earth realm where we are more sensual or we are more conversant or more active to the fallen state of man. Amen. So, and I love the scriptures that we are taking, you know, talking about Esther chapter 4 verse 14. So I'm just going to read it. Let's read from different translations. Okay? So, um, I'm going to take two verses from that particular, uh, from the Amplified. 13 and 14. Then Mordecai told them to return this answer to Esther. Do not flatter yourself. yourself that you shall escape the king's in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, if you keep silent in this season, if you keep silent right now that things are happening the way they are happening and you think that, oh, you are in a shelter, you are in a safe place, Say, don't flatter yourself. Say, because if you keep silent in that your comfort zone, if you keep silent because you have a good job, if you keep silent 
because you are eating well. If you keep silent because you are well clothed. <laughs> hey, at this time, he said, relief and deliverance shall arise for the Jews or for people of the world from elsewhere, but you and your father's house will perish. And who knows but that you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this and for this very occasion. Could it be that the reason you have that job could it be that the reason you are occupying the place, the position, the post, the, could it be that the reason you got married into that family is for such a time as this to activate, to be an instrument in God's hands, to be a savior that the Lord has ordained to set his people free? You know, I post, um, somebody posted a clip from our, from our um, what they call it, quantum missions of, that we held last year, November, and we're talking about in every place that you find yourself standing, wherever you find yourself at any given time, do not just think that the reason you are there, take for example, you got a job, got a job offer. They gave you a beautiful, you know, by the time you went through your offer letter, you could see yourself, you were smiling to yourself because the offer is really, really good. Fat salary, good conditions, and all of that. And you just take it in, and you rejoice, and you laugh, and it ends there. Mm. But let me tell you something. Thank God for the offer letter. Thank God for the job offer. Thank God for the office that they are giving you. Thank God for all the things they saw. Maybe they gave you a brand new car. Maybe they gave you laptop and all the equipment to get you ready for your job. Thank God for all of that. But guess what, brother and sister? That if you do not take time to lay that aside and then connect with your kingdom, which is your source. Ah, connect with the operations of your kingdom, which is beyond the spheres of the earth realm, if you do not connect with the headquarters, which is your father's throne, where you are seated, ah, yeah, yeah, where you are seated, you are not going to sit, but you are already seated in that place. You are seated with Christ in his co-executive throne, where you are seated on the executive throne with Christ in God. If you do not awaken your consciousness of that realm in order to hear what they are saying to you, in order to get an information of why, of why they opened that door, the door of that job, the door of that office, the door of that multinational, the door of that position, it wasn't because you were the best. But you know what? Because you carried a kingdom man mandate you became the best. Because the least, mm, mm, the least in the kingdom of God is greater than the greatest of all the men that you can, all the kings put together on the earth realm. Ooh, my God, that, that. And that is why when you come into this knowledge and understanding, it's something that blows your mind off. It's something that emboldens you. It's something that supernaturally equips you and gets you ready for what is about to come. But because we have been so carried away, we have been paying attention to the wrong things. We, we look at the salary, we look at the benefits, we look at the connections, we look at the travels, and we think that is all. Even the travel attached to those positions, they were attached to them because there is a greater assignment that you were ordained to carry out. So if you are talking about being anointed for this season, the season that you are entering into is a season that will begin to unlock the purpose, your, destiny, your destined purpose that have been buried in you, waiting, crying out, calling out to say, 
It's time I need to be expressed. So the Lord is saying to us this time, I simply cannot sit on my boards, enjoying the salary. How many of you have noticed that no matter how good your job offer is, how many of you have noticed that you are simply not satisfied? Have you ever sat down to think about it? That you always want more? The reason is simply because that is not the assignment. That job description they gave you is a stepping stone, is a means to your entry into the main assignment. And when you enter into the main assignment, you will find that you, know, you are no longer paying attention. You won't even remember whether you earn salary or not. Do you know why? Because now you are seated on the executive throne of God. And in that place, your supply is not based on the salary that you are earning. Why? Because Jesus was speaking. He said the laborer is worthy of his wage. The wage that he was talking about was not an earthly wage. It's not that salary that you are paid. He's talking about the wage that flows from his father's throne. <laughs> and that is why you see that you can always reach out some, such that sometime when your MD is even broke, you never know. You don't have any definition in your vocab called broken broke. Why? Because from the source that you are connected, just like a king's palace, you can't step into a king's palace and they say there is a lack of something. No. For something to lack in the king's palace means that the kingdom is shut down. And guess what? No matter how terrible things may be, the king's palace must get their constant supply. Their food must not be reduced in one day. Do you know why? Because the king... The king is a representation. If things begin to go, if the king's portion or ration of every meal, if something gets missing, if something is reduced, it then means that kingdom is finished. The same way an ambassador, no matter how poor a country may be, when they send an ambassador to a nation, they must fund everything for that ambassador. Why? Because to not fund that ambassador's need, to not supply everything that is needed, means that that nation is finished and that nation loses its respect and honor before the nation, that is, before the hosting nation of that ambassador. Am I making sense? Are you getting this? Now, when Jesus said Amen. that you are in the world, but you are not of the world, have you ever taken time to meditate on that scripture? Do you know that Jesus was teaching you how to be within a system, to be a transformation agent within the system without being affected or being held down by the operations of the system? My God, let me break that down some more. I'm, and I'm going to use a few people in scriptures. Then I'm going to use you to show you something. Okay? Joseph, in Potiphar's house. He was in Potiphar's house as a slave. <laughs> But Potiphar handed over everything. Why? Because whatsoever is recorded that whatsoever he touches. He said Potiphar even lost count of what he had. Why? As soon as this slave boy entered into Potiphar's house, the prosperity of Potiphar quadrupled. To the point that Potiphar did not know he could he did not have an he did not have an account of what he owned because he had become rich. Why? There is somebody who was seated on a throne <laughs> that is higher 
than Potiphar's throne. Somebody who was seated on the throne that was to be the father of Pharaoh. Somebody who was seated, who, who was seated on a throne that was even higher, that carried a glory that was higher than, than even Pharaoh's glory. That throne had the power to rule over the throne of Pharaoh. But the Lord was teaching Joseph. So Potiphar thought he bought a slave. What he did not know was that God had mercy on him and sent him and help. I'm praying that you you begin to see yourself because I'm creating a picture for you now to see. Now, but see, listen to this. He was in that system, but that system did not have a hold on him because for him to occupy and sit on the throne where he was ruling, from whence he was ruling over Potiphar's house, he must not be influenced. He must not be held down. He must not be captivated by the oppressions in Potiphar's house. Why? Because he occupied a higher place that must rule over every other power, no matter how dark, no matter how light, no matter the shape, no matter the size that were in Potiphar's house, including the gods, he was seated on a throne that neutralized every contrary power and brought every other god to brought them under subject and subjugated them to the obedience of the will of the one on whose throne he was sitting. Now, <laughs> So, a time came when another God came. But it was time for his promotion. Woo! You know, a lot of the times, people think that when promotion comes, that your exam, your examination must be a written one. <laughs> there are times your exam had to be a practical one. Listen, that's why the scripture says, Count it all joy when you fall into divers, divers, divers temptations and trials. Say, count it all joy. Why? He said, for the trial of your faith. The trial of your faith works what? Patience. Now, I say, let patience have its perfect work hmm, so that you will be mature for the next position that they have created for you in the ranch. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Listen to this. Every time trials come, every time temptations come, they, those are the examinations. They are stepping stones into your occupying the next position that have been created for you in the realms of the Spirit. And that's why I say, count it all joy. You don't complain. Look at when this trial, a carrot was dangled in his face. And Potiphar's wife, remember, he said not once, not twice. It's something that had been occurring. But on this particular day, he grabbed him. It's like the woman could no longer resist it. Grabbed him. Say, look, why? Because he saw this young man. He had everything that a woman desires. He had wisdom, he had knowledge, he had understanding. The counsel of God was with him. He had strength. He was skilled. So, he grabbed him. And the young man told him, how can I do this? Listen, he, he wasn't telling her, how can I do this and sin against you? No. How can I do this and sin against my master? No. He said, how can I do this and sin against the one on whose throne I am seated? He said, how can I do this and sin against God, the heavenly father, before whom I stand, on whose throne I'm seated? How can I do this and offend him? 
Why? If maybe Joseph had seen Potiphar as his employer, he probably would have done that to overthrow the master. But he had another employer that men do not see. I want you to understand this today, that where you are, whether you are in China, whether you are in the U.S., whether you are, you are in the U.K., wherever you are, hooking on this meeting, on this platform right now, whether you are on YouTube, wherever you are, connecting to this platform, I want you to understand this. Whether you are on Facebook, I want you to understand this right now, that God sent you into that place as a kingdom agent bearing all of the equipment of heaven you are not seated in that place you are seated on the throne that is higher than your employer's head the highest throne in that office is only drinking from the throne that you are seated upon and guess what the day you begin to understand, and I pray that today becomes the day that you begin to open your eyes to see where you are seated with God, with Christ, inside of God, the very fountain of life, the fountain of knowledge, the fountain of wisdom, the one from whom the living waters flow to heal all the nations, the one from whom wisdom comes, the one who carries the scepter, the royal diadem is in his hands, and he is standing with you. You are standing with him. He holds you by the hand, and he guides you into all of knowledge. He guides you to the place where you begin to break and dismantle everything that the enemy may have erected, subduing gods, subduing kings, and bringing them to bow at the very feet of God, where they begin to interact. And they, in, when they come in contact with you, they start interacting with life. Is somebody hearing me this afternoon? So that place where you are seated, that place, that position that you occupy is a position that gives you an access or that gives you an ability that establishes his kingdom. And through you, he begins to gain access into every nook and cranny of that establishment wherein he has planted you to establish God's kingdom in that place. Is somebody getting the mark? <laughs> Woo! My God. And that is why I believe strongly that the anointing that is coming in this time and season is an anointing that opens the eyes. It's an anointing that will strengthen your hand. It's an anointing that releases wisdom to subdue kings. An anointing that releases the counsel such that when you release that counsel, when the counsel begins to flow from your mouth, it's an anointing that releases and that gives you an utterance. It's an anointing that gives you an utterance that when you speak, you will be speaking, releasing the words from the throne of God that is backed up with the authority of his kingdom that begins to break every hole that have limited the expressions of God in the place where you have been established. So I bring you news this afternoon. Or this year in, in, in China is evening. So I bring you news that there is a glory that is coming. And the anointing that is being released in this time, in this hour, is an anointing that will usher men into the operation of a new kind of glory that men will see and they will begin to marvel and they will say, what manner of people are these? Such that what was said in Athens will be, will be echoed again where they will say, wow, we have seen the gods coming to us in the form of men. That would be somebody's testimony in this house in the name of Jesus. Somebody is about entering into their office on Monday, <laughs> on Tuesday, on Wednesday, or any time work resumes. You will enter into your office and all of a sudden there will be 
such streams of living waters, such wisdom, frequencies of life, and frequency of love, and you will begin, men will begin to see an unusual burning of fire round about you, and they will wonder, what is this? What has happened to him? What has happened to her? And some will say, maybe it's not him. Let me go and touch. And as soon as they touched you, fire broke out over them, and they began to turn over, and things began to happen in their lives. Those that were sick began to get healed. Those that have been struggling with things, all of a sudden things become, begin to fall in place. You will walk into homes, and they, they said the home, they were about hitting the rock. But all of a sudden, you carried a presence, a divine presence, into the place. And all of a sudden, they say, I don't know what happened, but as soon as you walked in, it's like my head rearranged. And my mind was reconfigured. I had a mind shift, and I just knew that I had to forgive my spouse. I have to forgive my wife. I have to forgive my husband. And all of a sudden, people, men have tried to reconcile you. No reconciliation took place. But as soon as you entered, there was a casting away. There was a dispelling of the darkness that covered that arena. Light shone. And all of a sudden, hearts were shifted. Minds were reconfigured. And people were willing for a reconciliation. Somebody hearing the sound of my voice this, this afternoon, this evening, this morning, I decree and declare over you that you will be for signs and for wonders. And when you step into places, you will be a voice unto nations, you will be a voice unto spheres, you will be a voice unto regions, and not just will it be that you are just speaking, but every word you speak will produce life that cannot be denied in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory Jesus. to God. <laughs> Woo! My God. So you see, and now look at Joseph. From that place, he was promoted to the dungeon. <laughs> Somebody will say, What kind of promotion is that? Hmm. There are certain things. Have do you know? Take for take for example in Nigeria, there are certain promotions that you want to occupy. They will send you to a place called Kul in Jos. Why? They, in that place they will go and lock you in the classroom. You won't see the light of day. Do you know why? There they will teach you. They just they just they just promoted they just um, promoted some generals. Um, break it down, one star general, two star generals, and all of that. And they were telling them, they said, now, the things that you learn, which means it's a different school entirely, the school of generals, it's not something that you learn in public. <laughs> they will have to take you into a dungeon. <laughs> so there are certain promotions that will come. They may not look like a promotion, but it is a promotion. It may, sometimes it look at, looks as if you were demoted, but that's because they needed to take you into that dark room. <laughs> they needed to take you into that dark room where you are developed in order to produce so many replications of your type. You know, the generation we are now, the digital generation, they will not understand what I'm trying to explain. But in those days, when they had Kodak films, <laughs> they had Kodak films, they had um, um, the, 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 they had Fuji films, and all of that. You see, you will buy films, then you will put it in the camera, then you will start clicking and clicking. Then after that, you will remove the film, then you will take it to a place where they call development. Do you know how it is developed? In the development room, it is called a dark room. They will take it to the dark room. Then they will develop it to produce negatives. With that negative, you can continue producing pictures and pictures. You'll be rolling out pictures and pictures constantly. Now, listen to this. Do you know that your eyes are like the camera that takes the picture? Click, click every time you blink, you are taking pictures. Then when you go back, 
in your meditation time that is the dark room where everything you saw in the daytime they are developed they are matured into life but guess what do you know that sometimes when god wants to take you into your next level he will take you into a dark room do you know why because the level that you are going into is a place where you are going to produce your kind but for you to produce your kind you must first be developed into a negative into a righteous negative you must first be developed into something that cannot be corrupted <laughs> oh my god you must first be developed into um something that can reproduce and reproduce and reproduce and where that takes place is in the dungeon in the dark room but you know something once you have been taken through a process even when you are in the dungeon who you are still expresses itself your sonship we see find expression and that was what happened with joseph in the dungeon whilst in the dungeon he was still a leader he was still a champion he began all of the wardens they went to sleep <laughs> they went to sleep why because he, he took charge of everybody why it is the calling it remember i said he was sitting on a throne that was higher than the throne of egypt is somebody hearing me and i want you to understand have you so i want you to understand every one of you on this call today that you are occupied you are sitting on a throne that is higher than the throne of china <laughs> you are sitting on a throne that is higher than the throne of the united states you are sitting on a throne that is higher than the throne of any earthly throne you can think of you are seated on a throne that is higher than any earthly throne that is why he says that though you are in the world you are not of the world i want us to say that together i am in the world but i am not of the world can we say that together want to go i am in the world but i am not of the world you can type it type it type it type it come on go ahead let's let's speak that it's affirmation we are affirming we are affirming our confessions we are affirming our identities we are establishing our identity and we are speaking it and releasing it by fragrance into the atmosphere hallelujah glory to god so you see joseph he understood his throne he was seated on the throne he understood the operations of that throne i'm speaking directly to somebody this afternoon this morning this evening that you will understand the operations of the throne that you are seated in the name of jesus i am speaking that the anointing that will come upon you we teach you we teach you the full operation of the throne that you are seated upon in the name of jesus amen hallelujah so joseph in that dungeon he took charge of everything so by the time when he had completed his training within the training they sent the people that will announce when his training is complete <laughs> they sent chief examiners to him two of them and when they came do you know that he actually failed the exam so he had to spend two extra years <laughs> Because when he got there, when those people got there, the, but, the butler and the, you know, the, two, the, the baker, when they got there and both of them had, this, had dreams in the same night and they shared it. And of course, by the time he explained, he said to one of them, when you have been positioned, when your promotion is complete, mention me to Pharaoh. <laughs> but he did not know that everything has been pre-planned but there was a time yeah. all he needed to do was to partner with time i pray that somebody will learn partnership with time in today in the name of jesus so Amen. when you when you learn to partner with time 
you will never see yourself, you will never see delays. You will never see that, oh my goodness, why are things not happening? I've been waiting, I've been crying, oh, I've been married for seven years, no issues. Listen to me, my brother, my sister, that learn to partner with time. When you partner with time, you will see that time is your servant. Time, you are a master of time. You can bend time. You can tell time, go this way. You can tell time, do this. You can tell time, compress, and time will obey you. Because time listens to every word that you speak. Amen. Amen. You know, I know that we have said that you waste, you are wasting time. No, no time is wasted. Time is constant. <laughs> time is constant. Time is not the, the, the clock that is on the wall. You know, who told you that your life is governed? Who told you that 24 hours make one day? Who told you that? That is what the systems of the world put in your being. But guess what? You, you are not one who is bound by the systems of this world. And that is why you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because that is who your father is. Hallelujah. Amen. So you are not bound by times and seasons. That is why the operations that God is bringing us into is an operation that only those who will understand this, who will have this knowledge and work in this council, that this thing that you are working into, you must operate it both in season and out of season. Remember when Jesus was talking to them, he said, pray in and out of season. Do you see that? Pray in and out of season. What was he saying to you? He was saying, pray when you are within the system, but also pray when you are outside the system, which means you are not bound by the operations of the system. You are, in fact, you are boundless. You are limitless. <laughs> so you must express your limitlessness. You must bring, allow your limitlessness to enter into where there are limits, to expand their limits, and when you expand their limits to the point that they also become limitless. All of a sudden, you will find that you enter into stress and you will take away limit. You will take away the limits. You enter into your car. They say your car, the speedometer is 220, 220 kilometers per hour. All of a sudden, you enter into your car. There is a rain you get into, and you are wondering if there are cars, if there are other cars on the highway. Why? But you are doing normal. As far as every other person is concerned, you are doing normal speed. <laughs> but you have entered into a realm. Let me give you. A, let me just stretch your mind a little. Look at it this way. You will see that I was looking at some of the galaxies. There's a particular galaxy that 240 years here from the Earth realm is one year there. 240 years on the Earth realm is one year there. So if you are calculating your age, listen to this now. I want to bust your mind. I want to break whatever table, whatever leg of table is remaining. Let me break it. Listen to this. If you are living by the consciousness and you are calculating your age based on the consciousness of the Earth realm, <laughs> eh? based on the consciousness of your Earth, Earth, Earth realm operations and all of that. Now listen to this. Remember that you are in charge of the cosmic realms. All the galaxies, you, you and I, we're supposed to be ruling over them. If we are ruling over all other galaxies, now, look at that galaxy. That one year there is 240 years on the Earth realm. So what it means is that if you are bound by time, if you are bound by the operations and the consciousness of the 24-hour clock, amen, by 24-hour clock, what it means is that when you get to that galaxy, you've not, right now, what it means is that you are not even in existence. <laughs> do, you, do you get it? Because none of us are even up to 100 years. Which means, in that galaxy, you are not even in existence. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Meanwhile, you are supposed to be a king in that galaxy. 
You are supposed to be a king in that galaxy. Somebody is telling me, somebody is writing 120 limit. But that 120 limit, let me, I'm going to read something to you now to bust your theology. Because the way we have interpreted it is wrong. When you read the King James Version, you will get it wrongly. Let me read a translation for you. Thank you for bringing it up, my sister. Or my brother. I don't know who. Amen. Now, let me read this. Um, I'm going to read Genesis, where we got that particular scripture from. Genesis chapter, I think it's chapter 6, or is it 3? I think it's 6 verse 3. I'm reading the Living Bible, the Living Bible, TLB. Verse 3 says, Then Jehovah said, My spirit must not forever be disgraced. <laughs> do you see, do you know how many times the spirit of the Lord has been disgraced in us? Because of our mindset. He said, My spirit must not forever be disgraced in man. Holy evil as he is. Holy evil. That's completely, totally evil as he is. I will give him 120 years, listen to this now, to mend. To mend. In other words, to correct his ways. Is somebody hearing me today? <laughs> and I'm going to bust your theology again. Because if this is Jehovah speaking, and Jehovah is not bound by time, and as at this time, remember that the world clock have not yet been manufactured. So when he says 120 years, I want to give you a mathematics to calculate. If you have your calculator, work it out. Listen to this. Let me blow your minds. A thousand years is like one day <laughs> in the presence of the Lord. And a day like a thousand years. So if he says, I will give him 120 years to mend, to correct his ways, do you know what the Lord is saying? Because when we saw this, we began what, by the time we were reading our Bible, we forgot that the Bible had been in existence long before civilization came. <laughs> or modern civilization came that began to limit things. Modern civilization actually limits our ability to strive into the fullness of who we are. Modern civilization is a limiting force that every believer must try to break away from. Because our civilization is not something that, we, that is being developed. It's something that has been. That is why I said, there is nothing new under the sun. What is has always been, and we, what, what, will, what will be, I mean, what is, had been, and what will be, is something that will always be. <laughs> Hallelujah. But look at that. Let's even take it from the chronological years, the Gregorian years. It says, I will give him. Jehovah said, my spirit must not, must, must not forever be disgraced in man. Holy evil as he is, I will give him 120 years to mend his ways, to correct his ways. What is that correction? That you will return back to your sonship identity. That you return back into the place that you were ordained to occupy as a son so you will begin to express the life the kingdom the power the glory the honor the authority of yeshua's kingdom you miss a good place to shout hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. hallelujah. amen hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah glory to god so you see that what god had ordained for concerning us all the while 
is for us to express himself in every place. Listen to this. I was telling somebody this morning in our fellowship, and I told her, I said, Ma, you know, we have taught that we are studying to know God. But I have news for you. That every study you do to know God, every knowledge of God you gain, brings you into the true knowledge of who you are. So every time God introduces himself in a unique way, in a new dimension, But you see, the reason we have not been able to enter into it was because we were trying to know God. We were trying to know God. But God said the easiest way to know Him is to understand that every knowledge of me you gain, you are gaining. Every knowledge of me you gain, you are actually gaining a knowledge of yourself. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. <laughs> That's why Jesus, when he came, that's why in Second um, First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-one, he said, "This is our calling. This is our calling, that we walk in his steps, even as he walked." What that means, when Jesus came, that's why I said he was tempted in all ways, but he was without sin. What was he doing? He was showing us how to live our lives. So if you want to understand how to live your life, just study the life of Jesus. Do everything he did. You would have, you would have, you would have lived, you would have, re, you would have adjusted your life, reconfigured your life to please the Father. And once you begin to please the Father, you will, you will not be anointed for only one season. You will be anointed for all seasons. Amen. And that is what I have come to introduce. This is the foundation I have come to lay today. A foundation that will bring you into a place where you are anointed for all seasons. That's why he said how Jesus Christ of Nazareth was anointed by the Holy Ghost. And he went about doing good. He was anointed for all seasons. There were no limits. He broke, he broke, he broke all limits. Anywhere he entered, limits were taken off. Powers were subdued. Kings bowed before him. Guess what? That is who you are. When you step into places, when you get into organizations, when you get into, into, into buildings, powers, Kings must bow before you because you carry a mantra. The mantra is this, that I am a son. And because I'm the son of God, I carry the anointing of my father's throne. And I walk in the authority of his kingdom. And in walking in the authority of his kingdom, everything he is, is made manifest and is expressed in all that I do. Hallelujah. So from this day, Marcy, I want you to understand this. You are Pastor King. That the Lord have taken you from where you have been. The Lord have taken you, Abbey's Trooper. The Lord have taken you, everyone on this call, and He's bringing you into a place of a full maturity of your sonship in Christ Jesus, where you will now begin to express His profound authority and establish his glory in every place where you find yourself manifested or expressed in Jesus name Amen. so I declare that the, the limits are taken off that which blindfolded Amen. that which limited you that which made you to think less than you are 
I say they are taken off, they are broken off your realm, they are broken off your shoulders, they are taken off that 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 particular limb, that particular leaves that was placed over you so that men can see you. You can't even see men. You can't see the, the throne that has been given unto you. Today that lead is taken off in the name of Jesus. The hold is broken in the name of Jesus. You are lifted from that dungeon. You are lifted from that place. Because after two years, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, somebody say all of a sudden. There is a sudden thing that will happen in your realm. When you have been fully prepared, when you have been fully trained, there will be an activation. You will find that the forces of the earth, the forces will begin to align in your favor. And when they begin to align, they will go to the king. They will go to the nobles. They will go to the princes. They will go to all the leaders in the land. They will go to the head of the establishment. That particular position that the Lord showed you in your vision, and you were wondering, how can I ever enter into that place? How can I get into that government house? How can I become the president of the nation? Listen, when you have been fully, come, when you have been fully trained and the process is done, all of a sudden, the Lord, the Lord himself, he will come knocking on the king of the door. He will, he will come knocking on the, on the dream gates of the king. And he will open the dream gate and he will usher the king into the place of dreams. And the king will be given a dream that he cannot understand. The king will be given a dream that he cannot interpret. The king will be given a dream that he cannot remember. The king will be given a dream that he cannot shake off. He will know that this dream is saying something. But why can't I understand it? Then he will start calling for somebody to interpret the dream. Is there an interpreter in the land? Is there an interpreter in this house? Where are all the magicians? Where are all the, 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 the astrologers? Where are all the sorcerers? Where are all the warlocks? They will come. They will combine, they will tumble things, they will try things, but nothing will work. Why? Because the God who gave the dream will shut down every other realm of interpretation. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. He will shut down all the other doors. Why? Because the time to establish my servants that have been taken through a process, that time has come. The time for the magnification of my son has come. Somebody is about being magnified in this place. You have been hidden. You are, they have locked you in. They have locked you out. They have said you will not break in. You will not break out. But I have news for you today. That God is bringing you to a place. He has opened the dream gate of a king. He has opened the dream gate of a prince. He has opened the dream gate of the highest throne in that land. And all of, all of a sudden they are searching for an interpreter. And they called all those who once interpreted dreams to them. They, uh, they have contacted all the men of God. They have contacted all the bishops. They have contacted <laughs> all the magicians. They have contacted all the native doctors. They have contacted all the DBS. They have contacted hmm, all the marabouts. But nobody is giving them an answer. Do you know why? Because the Lord has shut down every other portal. Only one portal is open. It is the portal of sons. It is the portal that gives access unto sons. And that portal is not open for them to step into the palace, for, step, for them to step into the land life. And I've seen sons, sons all of a sudden, they are shaving. They are putting on the right robes. Why? Because in the process of their training, they know the right dressing. They know the right regalia. They even know the time to put on the dressing that is fit for the palace. Woo! My God. And by the time he gets there and he begins to tell the dream, he will say, Yes. Oh, O oh King, the Lord. You see? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord has shown you mercy. And by the time he finished interpreting the dream, he says, So, King, this is the advice. Seek somebody who you can trust. Let them begin to buy the wealth of nations. Hey! Let them begin to buy the wealth of nations and store them up within the next few years. God is going to give somebody a counsel that will cause kings to look for you. 
somebody is going to receive a counsel, somebody is going to receive an insight, somebody is going to receive a download this afternoon, this morning, this night, that as you go to bed, you will receive a download, that by the time you put that download and you put it up on social media, you put it up on your website, you put it up in any place, you will find that kings will start knocking on your door. They will say, we've been waiting for you. We've been hearing about you. The Lord has been telling me that somebody is coming from a far country. Somebody is coming from China. Somebody is coming from Malaysia. Somebody is coming from Singapore. Somebody is coming from Australia. Somebody is coming from the Middle East. Somebody is coming from the, from the United States. Somebody is coming from, from the UK. Somebody is coming from, from Latin America. Somebody is coming from, from, hey, from the Caribbean. Somebody is coming from Europe. Somebody is coming from Africa. And they carry the wisdom that I need. I never knew that you were the one. When I read it, I, I just knew this is the man I've been waiting for. This is the woman I've been waiting for. This is the boy, the girl I've been waiting for. This is that person that I've been waiting for. They will call you and they will clothe you, they will robe you. And by the time he finished giving him the description of the dream and the download, he said, who else? You might be in a strange land, but I say unto you, very soon they will give you a position that that no foreigner had ever occupied. Why? Because you carry the wisdom for that office. You carry the wisdom for that territory. You carry the wisdom that we rule and reign and subdue kings. And they know no other person in that land can occupy that position but you. Something is about happening. Something is about happening. Something is about happening that we unlock things and that we open doors, that we break down walls and we lift you up and we cause that that had never happened in the history of that nation to happen. Why? Because a son has a reason. One who will begin to align the systems and begin to rearrange and reset things is here. I want you to unmute your mind and begin to declare, I am that son. I am that man. I am that woman that kings have been waiting for. The nation, this nation has been waiting for me. Hey, the nation of Af the continent of Africa has been waiting for me. Asia has been waiting for me. The Middle East has been waiting for me. Come on. I want you to begin to decree and declare that the kings, they've been waiting for me. My name is now sounding in their palaces. Hey, my name is now sounding in their palaces. All of a sudden, they are rising up. They are, begin they are getting stirred in their spirit. And they are beginning to hear the sound of my name. Why? Because my name is being carried by the wind. My name is being carried by the stars. My name is being carried by the elements of nature. My name is being carried by the snow. And is now beginning to announce my name in those palaces, in those offices. I am that person. I am the one that my name is ringing a bell in the ears of the prime minister, in the ears of the king, in the ears of the president. Yes, in the palace, in the throne, in the parliament, my name is ringing a bell. There is a sound that is carrying my name and is breaking all the ways, is breaking all the areas. Why? Because my sonship has come into full time, it's come into maturity, and is now awaiting divine expression. Mm. Woo, my God. I see sons arising. I see daughters arising. I see princes and princesses arising. I see kings manifesting. I see them growing into full bloom. Yes, they are breaking all limits. They are stretching the limits. And they are beginning to take up the limits in situations, in, in palaces, in systems. And men are beginning to wonder what manner of people are these. Woo! We thank you, Father. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Woo! My God! My God! See fire, fire, fire everywhere! Fire everywhere! 
Fire everywhere. Fire everywhere. This is fire conference. Fire everywhere. Because a people who carry, who have been lit up, they are now beginning to set nations ablaze. They are setting systems ablaze. They are upturning systems and they are establishing the authority of their, of their father's kingdom, even on the earth realm. Thank you, Father. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Woo! <laughs> we give you praise. Woo! We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we do pray. In the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Come on, I'm Marie. The glory of the Lord resting on you. Thank you, Father. Yes, I see the glory resting on people right now. For some of you, you literally feel a chill running down your being. For some of you, you will find yourself sweating in the midst of snow. You find yourself sweating in the midst of snow. Because the glory of the Lord is heating up the system right now. Fire is breaking out on people. Emerson, yes, the glory of the Lord is resting on Tabisu. The glory of the Lord is resting on Abistruba. The glory of the Lord is resting on Area. The glory of the Lord is resting on Awele. The glory of the Lord is resting on people right now, on Blanche. The glory of the Lord is resting on Baule. The glory of the Lord is breaking. I, I, see, I see things being breaking off people. It's like limits are being stretched. People are being taken, from, taken out of limitations. Things that have limited you, you are being taken out of it. And you are being established in the place of limitlessness. This is the time. It's your season. It's your season. It's your season to operate out of season. <laughs> it's your season to operate out of season. It's your season to break into. It's your season of limitlessness. It's your season to operate outside, beyond limits. Whether you're on Facebook, whether wherever, whatever platform you are on, whether you're on, on, on whether you are on YouTube, there is a breaking of every yoke. That every yoke of limitations is taken away in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you. We shall take it further tomorrow. Tomorrow, like if, God, if God permits us, we'll discuss Daniel and we'll discuss Jesus. If God permits. But I believe that if today had been like this, I wonder what tomorrow would be like. So right now, I release the fire that you begin to burn around on all sides. And I say, even in your sleep tonight, you will have unusual encounters that you will know that indeed I have breaking out of every limitation in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. So I say right now, I release fire into your room. I release fire into your sitting room. I release fire into your offices. I release fire into your region, into your territory. If you are living in a high-rise building, <laughs> don't be surprised that your neighbors will begin to wonder what's going on. There will be commotion. Why? Because what is happening with you will break out and will begin to find expression. Because this program is not limited to this platform, but it's something that will begin to find expression all around you in the name of Jesus. God bless you and cause His grace to shine upon you in the name of Jesus. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful day. So talk to your friends. Bring them on. Let's, let's, let's activate this thing in us. And let's carry this fire into the cities and into the nations and into, into the continents. And let's set continents ablaze in Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you all. Bye-bye.